Hey there, uh, welcome back. It's great to see you. So my name is Elizabeth and I'm the designer and teacher at EBITDA Studio. And this is just an update of some of the things that I've been working on and some of the things that I'm finished. And also I'm gonna show you some details of a little project that I'm working on later. So glad to see you. Uh, we are solidly into summer right now in Canada where I live and it's been uh, pretty hot here. So thank goodness I have air conditioning, perfect weather to stay inside and so. Uh, so what have I finished? Um, this is something I've been working on for a long time. I finally finished my Hardinger bookmarks pattern. So this is a pattern. It has, um, it's for Hardinger, which is a kind of um, hand embroidery. It is counted thread. And so I say the basic thing, if you can count to four and count to five, that's the basic thing you need for Hardinger. Um, you do just count your threads and put the stitches in. Um, so this uh, pattern has three different bookmark patterns and they're all on a chart you can see in there. Um, and so this would be perfect for if you're looking for um, Christmas gifts or something nice that's small, a small stitching project. So it's great for the summer. Um, it's portable and it's also a useful thing. It's not just another thing. It's like, oh, where can I hang this on the wall? This is something that can be used and enjoyed. So if you um, like Hardinger or if you want to try Hardinger, this is a great project. I also finished a quilt which I'm excited about. This is actually a present for um, my niece who's finished high school. Congratulations, Hannah. Um, and this is a version of uh, Dreams Come True, my quilt pattern, which is a sampler quilt, a sampler of different log cabin blocks. And in this one, I did the uh, rainbow variation layout and I did bold colors on a black background. So I don't know how much you can see of it. This will give you a little taste of it. There's that side. So you can see that the log cabin blocks are on a diagonal. So it's not a traditional looking sampler and I can't get the whole thing on here. I can't back up far enough, but there's an idea of what it looks like. So it's all the color so that in the back of it um, I just use strips of the colors that were left over so that turned out really nicely um, I actually used black batting on that uh, quilt which I've used once before um, the black batting um, it was okay to use I have kind of mixed feelings um, it clearly is great for the black fabric to be really, um, uh, to help it be really dark. But then it also did, I think, darken down the bold color. So I'm not sure about that, but um, I think it'll look good. I think it'll help the black to not uh, um, wear out as quickly or kind of like, uh, like gray as quickly. Um, so that is a quilt that I finished. Then I also have a little, some hand embroidery uh, projects. So I'm not sure if I shared this one before, but this is a block. Um, it's for uh, part of Quilt Block Mania. This is a block for July. And so the um, uh, Quilt Block Mania is a bunch of quilting designers who uh, each month they offer a block for free and the block is based on a theme. So the theme for July was quilting. And so I did a variation of spool. So this is four little spool blocks put together to make a big block. And then all of my blocks that I'm making for this kind of go together. I'm using similar fabrics and they all have hand embroidered embellishments. So this has the hand embroidery on there. Um, so I'm happy with how that one turned out and sneak peek for August. August. I don't know if you know the name of that block. I did not know the name of that block um, at 
first. I discovered it based on the theme. So you can find out more about that in August. So that's coming really soon. Um, I also have a couple things in progress that I'm doing. So I'm doing another, um, this is a collaboration I'm doing with um, Andy from True Blue Quilts. And I'm doing some embroidery. She's doing some piecing. And we're going to put it together into a great project. And so I started on that. So here's a sneak peek for that. Um, and this I'm working on quilting cotton and I'm actually stitching with the uh, wonderful pearl cotton that I got. And this is size eight pearl cotton. So that's something different to stitch with besides regular um, embroidery floss. And it's been really great to work with. I like how that's turning out. And so, um, stay tuned. You'll be hearing more about this project that I'm doing, but that's a fun uh, little embroidery. I'm also um, finishing up my last projects for um, a little ebook that I'm doing, which is on how to do harding or embroidery. Because I do have a couple harding or embroidery patterns, but they assume a little bit of. Um, knowledge of how to do Hardinger. So I'm working on an ebook and a course that go together that assume no knowledge. So it'll take you right from the very beginning, like what materials do I use, what thread, what fabric, how do I start? Um, it takes you right from zero to doing some projects. And so this, <coughs> uh, this piece I'm going to be turning into a, um, pin cushion. And one of the things that's distinctive with Hardinger is it has these holes in the fabric. So that's actual holes in the fabric you can see through. And so if you're going to make it into something like a pin cushion or a pillow, it does need a lining fabric. And so I tried a couple of different fabrics behind it, but I really like this dark teal fabric, how that looks. So I'm going to be finishing that up into a pin cushion. So I should be able to finish that uh, pretty soon so you'll be able to see that and then I also have another um, Hardinger project that I'm finishing up and I'm gonna be working on that in a bit so you can see I will uh, walk through some of the um, decision processes of what I'm what I'm doing with variegated thread so you can uh, watch for that and I'm gonna step you through um, I have some new things that I've picked up recently that I'm kind of excited about. Uh, one is this is some more uh, wonderful pearl cotton, but this is size three. And so when I was at Quilt Canada, I did pick up some um, pearl cotton, but they didn't have size three there. They only had five, eight and 12, which are pretty common. So I ordered some, I got it in. So I'm excited to try this and I got this little a uh, gradient of colors. So I'm going to be trying this with Bargello on canvas to see how that turns out. I'm excited to try that. I like this color combination that I get. So you can be uh, watching out for that. Also, also I was at Michael's the other day which I haven't been to Michael's for a long time, but I happened to stop in and I saw a new thing. The cashier said it had only been on the shelf uh, for like a couple of days. And these are little canvases, but this is made out of wood. Um, so it's pretty solid. Um, so I think it was maybe designed for cross stitch or for whatever kind of stitching. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to try with this, but I had to buy it because um, it was so kind of cool. It came in a pack of four and there was all different shapes. So there were squares, circles, hearts. There was bigger ones, smaller ones. So I just got this one. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with this, but it did look pretty cool. So I'm going to try something. Uh, the one thing I was wondering is the holes are pretty small. So I'm not sure how thick I would be able to go with thread. Um, 
And I think that that size, I don't know, I'll just have to try some different things and see how that works out. The other thing I saw when I was in Michael's, which is unusual, is because um, usually they just have uh, embroidered floss and pearl cotton, but they had this other thread that I had never seen before. And this is tapestry cotton. So it's cotton thread. It kind of looks like embroidered floss from a distance, but when you look close, you realize that this isn't something that would be divided. Um, but it doesn't also it doesn't have the same luster as pearl cotton. It's a much more matte finish and it feels really soft. Uh, so I picked up a couple um, skeins of that to try. Uh, as the name implies, tapestry is probably what it was designed for. So I might uh, try something with that. I'm not exactly sure. I don't even know if this is too thick to be used with these, but I will play with that and um, see, see what I end up doing with this um, thread. Also, also when I was at Michael's, I got some uh, tapestry wool, which is much more common with tapestry. And I got this package, which has some different colors and this, I'm also going to be using with Bargello. So as you probably figured out, I have a lot of Bargello stuff coming up. So um, you can be watching for that. If you don't know what Bargello is, Bargello is, um, it's a very easy hand stitching form. It's counted thread, again, um, similar to Hardinger, that is counted thread, but it is even much easier than Hardanger. So if you're looking for an embroidery project that is just super relaxing, it's repetitive, uh, Bargello might be a good option for you because I think it's really easy uh, and it's also really beautiful. So um, watch for, I have a bunch of stuff coming for that. So the last thing I got I actually got it at a thrift store. I was at a thrift store with my daughters and I saw this kit and this is, I'm giving away my era here. Um, so this is a fully intact Holly Hobby stitchery kit. And I'm guessing this is from the seventies. It looks exactly like something from when I was a little girl. It's the kind of thing that might've been on the wall in my room when I was little. Apparently there's a whole collection of kits that you can get with Holly Hobby, but this is a totally sealed kit. So it has all the fabric, it has a frame, it has the pattern, um, and it's for uh, cruel embroidery. So it looks like it's stamped onto the fabric and then you fill it in. Um, and so I, I was just really uh, drawn to this. I don't know if I'm going to open it or stitch it or keep it like this. But in the store, I was just saying, oh, I kind of really want this, but I don't know if I'm ever going to stitch it. What am I going to do with it? And then my daughter pointed out, she goes, mom, it's $3. If you really want it, you can afford to get it. So I did get this. It's really cute. So if anybody had this stitching when they were little, that would be uh, fun to see. It says, start each day in a happy way. So I may or may not open this and stitch it or I might just keep it like this but it's a it's a cute little kit and it just um, even though I never had this it feels like something that I might have had or people my age might have had when they were young. So what I'm going to be working on today is this last Hardanger piece and this is the last project that is going to be in uh, my Hardanger ebook so you would get full instructions for how to do this. And this, I'm using this beautiful variegated thread from a Karen collection. And so seeing the different colors in there, I'm just gonna work through these outer triangles and I'm figure, trying to decide on the placement with the color. So because I have variegated thread, because of the size of that shape, I can kind of place my colors a bit. So I'm going to be playing around with that. So um, 
you can watch what I do and see if you agree with me or if you think I should have done something different. I'm happy to hear uh, your opinions. Um, so you can sure put your opinions in the chat. I'll also put um, links to anything that I have here that uh, would be linked to. Have a great summer. And I hope you enjoy watching how I stitch this and seeing how I think about it. So this is the piece that I'm working on. And you can see that the fabric is this kind of minty green fabric. And then the thread I'm using for the cluster blocks is, it's actually called Watercolors. And it's this chunky thread from the Karen collection. But it comes with uh, three strands so it can be divided into strands and then the strands are each about the equivalent of a size five five or eight pearl cotton so I'm using this for the cluster blocks and for the inner square I didn't plan anything with the colors I just put the colors where they were and then there's going to be triangles in each of the corners here. So for this triangle, I just took a length of thread and it happened to use one and a half of these lengths to make this triangle. So when I did that, I realized I had one and a half left. So I could make a triangle with the same colors and I could do some color placement because if I took another strand of this thread, the same length, you can see this one, has all the orange and yellow in it. And this one is all the pink and purple. So that would make the triangles, this triangle pink and purple, I can have another pink and purple, and then two triangles that are the yellowy orangey. So what I'm gonna have to decide here is how I'm gonna do the layout. So I have pink and purple here. So do I wanna put another pink and purple opposite and then yellow, yellow? or put the purple on one side and yellow on the other side. Um, so I've been thinking about this for a while and I was actually thinking of doing diagonal, but now I think it might be a fun effect to do the yellow on this side and the pink and purple on this side. And then it will be kind of like the two sides because this side of the square is much more yellow and this side is more purple. Um, I mean, if I had planned the inside, I could have planned that even better, but it is what it is. I'm not taking anything out to redo it. So I, I think I am going to um, do yellow on this side, but what I will start with, I'll start with this corner because this one Yeah, I guess this one will be yellow. Whether I do it side and side or if I do it opposite. Because I, I don't think I would do that one yellow. If I did that one yellow, that would kind of balance out all this yellow in the square if I did these two yellow. Okay, I think I will do this one yellow and then I will kind of uh, go from there to decide what I'm gonna do with the opposite too. So because this has three um, strands in it, you can see, I'm gonna have to separate that. And these strands do not separate as easy as uh, six strand embroidery floss. It's harder to pull them apart, but that's okay. They can't pull out from the top the same way embroidery floss does. I think it's because of the twist that's in it. And then once I have this, I will try and straighten it out a bit. So now I've stitched one of the strands of this piece. So I know that half of one of the other strands is gonna finish off this triangle. And I realize that I am totally overthinking this, but if I look at the halves, if I use this half, it's gonna be a lot more dark and kind of orangey, and this half is a lot more yellow. 
So depending on which one I use, it'll really impact the look. But whichever one I use, the other one will be used in the other triangle. So one of these triangles is gonna be even darker than the other triangle. So I guess, do I want the lighter one here or the lighter one somewhere else? Um, and so I guess, I guess I'll put the darker one here and then maybe put the lighter yellow triangle there and that might, I don't know, I'm totally overthinking this, but this part is lighter and it's getting darker as it moves around the square. This will be lighter and then darker over there. I don't know, I'll finish this one with the darker half and then see how that looks and then I'll decide how I'm gonna move on with this. So I'm not actually gonna be cutting this thread in half um, to uh, decide what part I'm stitching with. It just means that that part is gonna be away from the needle. So looking at this thread, I'll thread the needle So I finally got this needle threaded. And so that just means I can have this part of the thread in the fabric. I will start stitching there. So this is gonna be not a knot, but that's gonna be the end that I fasten off. So I'll start stitching from this side. And I'm going to start stitching here because that means that the purple will line up with the purple and it'll get lighter as I go around there. So. I will fasten off the end of the thread. And that's one of the things with variegated threads is sometimes you can do uh, what's called color pooling so that your colors will kind of line up and you'll get little effects from that. And that's fun to do, but it's also fun to just do random color placement and see how it turns out. And a lot depends on the thread that you're using, on how um, how the colors are divided and how wide the color pieces are. So if the dye is over long, um, long pieces, then it's more difficult to do. But you can see how this really matches up. It looks like that color's just continued along. So I'm gonna finish off this triangle and then uh, see where that leaves me with the thread. So now I've finished this piece, this triangle. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do another. The triangle up here is gonna be a lot more yellow and then this will be another pink and purple. And I think that'll give the effect that it, the color's moving around, similar to how it's moving around in the square, instead of having alternate, like purple, yellow, purple, yellow. I think that'll give the effect that the color is moving around. So I'll move on to this one, and I really want to have this part of the triangle be more yellow. So I'm gonna try and, um, I'll use that end of my thread to stitch so that this part is lighter and then that part is gonna be more purpley and then moving into this purple triangle. So I realize I am totally overthinking this, uh, but that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. And then hopefully it turns out great. So here I have all four triangles done and I think I'm happy with that. So the color seems to go around the outer square, like around the inner square. So now I can go ahead and do the cut work and the filling stitches, and this piece is gonna look really nice. The filling stitches I'm gonna do with wildflowers, which is in similar uh, colors. I'm not gonna worry at all about color pooling and color placement. It will just end up where it ends up, but I'm really happy with how that's looking. Thanks for joining me with this project. Um, let me know if you 
think I just totally overthought that for no reason, or if you like the color layout, or if you think I should have done something different, have a great summer. I hope you have somewhere cool that you can relax and do some stitching, and we'll see you next time. Bye!